artist Theodora Agastelionti painted with Zen art. And today I'm going to show you how I made this watercolor and mixed media portrait. This is my reference photo. You should opt for a reference photo that has a good amount of shadows to work with because if the photo doesn't have enough uh, contrast then the result might be flat and that's not really what we want. This is some of my uh, previous studies using Dalton Gambana uh, models as reference but you should avoid uh, using uh, Pinterest to create original artworks because you might face problems with the copyright uh, and you should prefer using photos that you've taken or from royalty free sites but it's okay to use Pinterest only for, for studies. Before I start painting, I'm gonna mix the colors first that I'm going to use. So I have in front of me uh, this glass as my palette. Uh, plexiglass is also good. Um, underneath I have placed this white paper so that um, I can see clearly uh, the colors that I've used. I have some inks, my watercolors, um, a jar uh, with water, some paper towel, and my favorite brasses from Zen Art. And I'm gonna start by mixing uh, some of the basic flat stones I'm going to use. So I've taken uh, a brush that can take um, a lot of water, uh, number seven round brush, and I'm gonna take some umber color and place it here on my palette. And then I am going to mix that with a little bit of red. Some, I'm going to take some uh, blue, just a little bit, a hint of blue, and I'm going to try it on some on a piece of paper. That's something I do to make sure that I've mixed the right tone before I use it on my painting. That's kind of good. Uh, for shadows. Now I'm going to mix a light buzz for the base of my uh, painting. Um, the base that'll be the, the first layer. I'm gonna mix it with a lot of water. So I've taken just the amber column and you can see it's a lot lighter than this one. That one is a little more um, purplish. And for the darker shade, I'm gonna take a little gray, grayish blue, and I'm gonna mix it with the darker color I made. Now it's it's too dark, it's too grayish, so I'm gonna take a little bit more amber and mix it with it. That's a bit better, yes. Yeah, now that's that's a better color. And now I'm going to mix the color for the eyes. I'm taking this light blue. I'm gonna make it a little bit 
more intense by using ink just a drop make the color a bit stronger a little more intense that's better and I'm going to show you the color that I'm going to use for the hair no that's not it Uh, it's a scarlet red, but um, it's a bit more intense look here. And if you remember the reference photo that I show you, her hair is a lot similar to this color. And we can make it a bit um, darker, the more darker parts of the hair because the hair is not just one color. They have lighter colors, they have darker colors, and that's what makes them um, more 3D, more realistic. So that's this purple. It's gonna be our darkest shade, actually. No, it's gonna be the mid tone. And that's gonna be our darkest for the hair. And I hope I gave you an idea of how I mix the colors and what you need. As you can see, I am starting by adding color to the eyes and lips because I feel it instantly brings the portrait to life. There isn't really a right or specific way to paint, but I'm going to show you my process. Now I'm adding a little more detail by defining hair characteristics, by adding color and shadows to the corners of her face, and later on, pink to her cheeks. A very useful tip would be to always have next to you a paper towel to help you correct mistakes by lifting the color. You can also have a small piece of watercolor paper where you can try the colors first just to make sure you have mixed the right shade. And now I'm moving on to her neck where she has the most shadows. While I'm waiting for her face and neck to dry before I can add another layer or more detail, I'm moving on to her earrings that have a bit of design and I'm painting them dot by dot using Indian ink. Indian ink is similar to watercolor, but the color is stronger and more intense, whereas with watercolors, the color tends to fade after they've dried. And now I am painting her hair, also with ink, and then arts for Squirrel number 8 flat brush from the Renoir set. It's perfect for adding texture to the hair. Another thing I really like to do is adding details with color pencils. Here I've used them to uh, define her jaw. And now uh, I'll be using them to define her eyebrows. With color pencils, I'm adding volume to her eyebrows. And now I'm using Zenart's number seven round brush to add another layer to her face. That brush is my favorite to use with watercolor as it is perfect for blending in. With some gold paint, I am adding the last details to her earrings and I feel that gives them a little something extra. And now I am painting the same scent patterns of her clothing that is multicolored using watercolor. And for the finishing touches, I mix in some dark purple to give volume to her hair. The painting that we made today. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and learned something useful. And if you did, don't forget to follow me, Theodora Agastaliotti, on Instagram and Zen Art. Thank you for watching.